Mm. Good morning. Coming to you from a warm, sunny Alaska. 41 degrees out today, which is incredible. But uh, what I wanted to talk to you guys about today and actually do a full-blown, from start to finish, um, almost tutorial on how I've been improving my backyard photography. So I know a lot of us are trapped inside, cooped up, only being able to go out back and uh, photograph things that are readily available to us, like, uh, like I said, in our backyard. So I wanted to talk about a little kit that I, I have that you can put together for uh, less than $200 um, off of uh, eBay, off of just shopping around a little bit, and, and really enhance your photography. So without further ado, let's jump into it, talk about the kit, go out back, and uh, kind of do this tutorial. All right, so what is all this stuff? Um, this is a really simple flash kit. And uh, I know when you hear the word flash, you don't automatically think about wildlife photography because it's uh, not something that uh, you hear a lot about. It's not something that we use in practice because it's really hard to use flash on subjects that are, that are so far away. But with uh, backyard photography, like we're gonna talk about today, it's a way that you can really make your images pop and look completely different than they would if you were not using flash. So I wanted to talk about this little kit. It's four items under $200 that you can use to just really uh, make your stuff pop. Um, first and foremost, really right stuff, B91. All it is is it's a almost like a hot shoe adapter, but it, it mounts onto your, your lenses and it extends out your flash up top and it allows you to uh, get flash off your camera and uh, that always looks a little bit better in my opinion. So the B91, you can find this online for, uh, I think I found it for like 60 bucks, maybe a little cheaper used. So you get that really right stuff, always good stuff from them. Second, just any sort of speed light. I'm using the Nikon SB900. These are going online used for 50 bucks, 100 bucks, somewhere in there, 50 to $100 all day. So uh, get yourself a speed light that uh, you're comfortable with. And um, next you need a way to trigger that. This is the Nikon SC17. You can use a remote trigger. You could use an IR trigger. I use this wire trigger just because it's what I have. And uh, these are $8, so uh, check that out. And then finally, this is what allows you to get that flash and send it out to your, uh, your subjects. This is the Better Beamer FX6. Now how this works is it literally straps on to your speed light. So put this bad boy on, Velcro it in, take the, um, this is what does it right here. It's almost like a magnifying glass, but for your flash. So I don't know if it's doing it, but you can check that out. Velcro is boom right there on the front of this extender. And then now, you have a way for your flash to pop and send it out to your subject, really focusing on what you're, you're trying to flash. This mounts to your uh, seven or eight dollar trigger. This mounts to the hot shoe of your camera. This sits on top of your, your lens and then boom, now you have yourself off camera extended flash. So let's throw this on the 600, go out back and uh, try to make some cool photos with flash. And you just take it put it into this little notch that they have on these uh, tripod, or not tripod, yeah, tripod foots that are on the bottom of your lens. It's kind of a pain in the butt because I'm doing this, trying to do it on video, which is not the easiest task. So you get that screw in there. All right, so there, it's uh, getting in there nice and tight. It's mounted, step one, complete. Slide this back into its home. Like I said, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but it's got a little home, a little magnet. Boom, Allen key is in there. So there, there you have it. That's the B91 attached. So now we have off-camera flash. And uh, next step, it's gonna be throwing the remote trigger on. So this is just your standard hot shoe mount. So we're gonna slide the little uh, hot shoe cover off, bring this into here, tighten it down. I normally wrap this around the extender a few times just because uh, I don't like this wire dangling all over the place when I'm out there. Um, not that I pack this thing anymore just because it's so awkward and heavy that uh, I don't really ever take this out into the field which is why uh, sitting at home has been so perfect to get to look, get to play with it. This screws in up top and then boom now you have a spot remote triggered to your flash. Grab the SB900 that we talked about. Throw this right up on top, lock her in there, and then now boom. Final step is the little 
flash adapter. Uh, the FX6. This is uh, 20 bucks online. You can find these. Like they're they're incredibly cheap. So throw this on there. Slide the Velcro on it. Boom. Grab the little magnification plate we talked about. Throw that on there. And now, boom, we have a off-camera flash extender that we're gonna go use to try to get some pretty interesting wildlife, and really bird photography. Um, hopefully we get a cool shot. Um, and then what I wanna do is I wanna come back in here with you guys, throw it on the computer, and then show you guys how I post-process um, some of my uh, flash photography and uh, just in general, my workflow for uh, editing most of my wildlife images. So let's head out back and uh, see if we can get anything. All right, so before we uh, jump into photography, I wanna talk about how I've set up my backyard during this quarantine to give myself the best pictures. Um, I've had a bird feeder. It's just your run of the mill standard bird feeder with a uh, normal bird seed that I think I got at like Walmart or something. Um, and I set it up on my porch like you guys have seen in some of my other videos, but um, I do it a little bit different. Um, I'm not a huge fan of having a big man-made object in the back of my uh, wildlife images. So what I did is I found two dead twigs that were just lying around in my backyard and I actually duct taped them to, or I gaffer tape, I'm sorry, I gaffer taped them to the top of the bird feeder. And what that does is that gives me the, the opportunity to get a natural looking image in my backyard, off my porch, and uh, it's under a really controlled environment. So uh, I'm just gonna gaffer tape these twigs onto this uh, bird feeder and then go set it up and then wait for them to show up and then uh, we'll try to get after some photography. Now, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't really think too far into like uh, what the composition of the sticks is gonna be. Um, I'm sure you could, like if you have a, a picture in your mind that you really wanna get, spend some time on this step, really uh, giving yourself the composition that you want. Um, nothing fancy. I mean, you guys see how plain this is. It's literally just uh, some gaffer tape, two twigs, a bird feeder, and some seed. And then boom, now we have our natural perch for our birds to uh, to land on as they're feeding from the bird feeder and uh, hopefully it gives us some cool uh, shots. So let's get set up. So, as you can see the chickadees are getting mad at me right now because I'm standing by their bird feeder and uh, all they want to do is come in and eat. But uh, the reason flash even came up for me is because uh, how my house is positioned is uh, this whole scene is really backlit and it's backlit all day by the way the sun goes across the sky. So I was taking some images and it was uh, just using natural light and they were all backlit, which you can get um, some really cool rim shot, like some rim lighting. Um, it just wasn't really working for me. So I wanted to add that element of flash to just really fill in the rest of the bird. So, okay. So I guess they don't mind that I'm here. But um, I'm gonna get out of the way, get the camera set up, and uh, start, ta start taking some images and uh, see what we can do with that flash. All right, so we're behind the camera now, just waiting for the chickadees to show up. Sorry about the lighting right now, it's midday, um, which normally would, uh, wouldn't allow me to come out and do photography, but using this fill flash is what, uh, what allows me the opportunity to give the light that I need to uh, kind of make a decent image. So I'm gonna just get this thing aimed where I need it aimed, this arm swivels forward and back and then just your normal uh, uh, adjustment pivot points on your speed light. Now uh, with flash for me, less is more. So I never like to use uh, enough flash to where the image looks flat or blown out. I just kind of use it as a fill light. Um, I use it to get the catch light in the eyes and just kind of accentuate some of those details in the feathers. So I'm using it at um, about an eighth of a stop of light and I'm just directing it straight at that branch and uh, another thing with using this setup is you have to set your, uh, your zoom to 50 millimeters. So what that is, is uh, that's the, the recommended distance or focal length that the flash is going to think that the camera's at or the think that the lens is. And that gives the best amount of light to the flash extender and um, allows me to really focus it where I need it to go. So all I'm doing now is getting it set up one eighth of a stop. And then uh, 50 millimeters, get a little test shot. All right, so the flash is working, looking good. Now I'm gonna get it focused. I actually ended up getting some uh, really, really cool uh, snow shots yesterday. Uh, yesterday was probably what I'm predicting to be the last snow of the season. Um, and I brought this same same setup, same everything we talked about right out here yesterday and uh, managed to get some really, really cool shots with the, the snow kind of blowing out, giving it that nice uh, out of focus bokeh look. But uh, I'm just gonna pre-focus on the branch.
So the, yeah, that's a tip is uh, I always pre-focus. So when I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for a wildlife shot, especially in a controlled setting like this, always pre-focus, get your uh, settings everywhere you want them to be. And then when the bird lands, all you have to do real quick is get down into the viewfinder, make sure the camera's on like right now. All I'm doing is waiting for the bird. All right, so right now uh, my settings are, I'm at F4, shutter speed's at 800, ISO is at 125, flash is a uh, 1 8th compensation, and uh, all it's really doing is it's giving me that fill light, giving me the catch light in the eyes, and it's accentuating what I want to accentuate. Uh, nothing overpowering about it. Um, just sitting here, so I'm gonna take a few more sh shots when they come in. Keeping in mind that uh, the whole point is not to uh, necessarily make it look like we're even using flash at all. Um, that's how my, those are my favorite flash images are the ones where you can't even tell that you're using flash. So I'm gonna sit out here for a little bit longer, try to get the best image I can uh, to take inside with us and uh, jump on the computer and we'll edit it. And uh, I'll show you guys how I uh, edit most of my wildlife photography photos. All right, so before I head in, um, a little trick I wanna, oh, hang on, of course. Um, another little trick I wanna talk about is uh, how to really attract birds to your feeder. Um, when I first set up my feeder, I was having a really hard time getting uh, birds to come to my feeder. And I was talking to a, a trapper friend of mine and he, uh, he told me his little old uh, adage or his old trick is uh, he takes this really long string of uh, ribbony glitter that he got at, like, you can get at Michael's or uh, you can get at any of those craft stores. And uh, it's about a foot, yeah, probably more like two feet long. And he put a nail on his wall and he, uh, he hung this ribbon from that, uh, from that nail and it blows with the wind and it, it really draws in a lot of attention from wildlife. And uh, I noticed immediately after I put up that, that little glittery ribbon, I started to have way more birds frequenting my uh, feeder. So if you guys are having a hard time getting animals attracted to, or birds attracted to your feeder, go out and get like a two foot long, little thin glittery piece of ribbon and uh, set it up somewhere next to your bird feeder so when the wind, it uh, bounces sunlight and really attracts some birds in. Um, it worked for me. But uh, I got some good images. So let's head in and uh, jump on the computer and I'll show you guys uh, how I like to, to do my editing for wildlife photography. All right guys, so uh, we're back in the office now. I got the images that we just took uploaded onto the computer and uh, I was uh, culling through them. I picked out uh, my like five or six top five and uh, I threw a quick edit on them. Only issue with these photos is uh, it was really simple. Uh, the lighting was so harsh outside and then the flashlight, not flashlight, but the flash fill um, made it so simple to edit that uh, I didn't want to choose one of these images to uh, edit for you because it was there wasn't really much to teach. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, pick one of the images that I took yesterday and I'm going to edit that with you guys, show you guys how I throw an edit on uh, something that's a little bit more complex. Still the exact same setup, use the exact same flash. And uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to jump into Screen Recorder now and let me show you how I do this. All right, so hopefully, uh, hopefully this is showing up just fine. But I'm going to go to the image that I took yesterday. That's the final. That's the, the final image, um, and I'm gonna show you guys how I got there. So, let's uh, start with the basic raw straight out of camera. This was taken uh, yesterday, settings are 400 ISO, 600 millimeters at f4 with 1 640th of a second with just um, 1 8th of a, a flash pop that we uh, talked about a little bit ago. So let me go ahead and reset everything, and uh, what we'll do now is we'll jump into the edit. So uh, when I do uh, snow photography or anything uh, that is uh, outside when it's cold, I wanna portray that cold feeling to my audience. So what I'm gonna do is uh, actually bring down the temperature just a little bit. I want, um, I want it to feel cold, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna actually bring down the temperature a little bit, somewhere in there where uh, I'm giving the sense of it being cold in the image. It's a little bit too cold. Maybe somewhere, somewhere right in there feels good to me. Uh, tent I had at plus two just kind of came up a little bit now uh, with the exposure um, I don't really want to touch the exposure. I, I kind of feel like uh, 
the overall exposure, like the global setting of exposure looks pretty good to me. Um, but what I do want to do is I want to add the contrast. So I shoot in uh, Canon RAW, or not Canon RAW, Nikon RAW. So what it does is it kind of makes my images flat. When I look at them on the back of the screen, it gives me that processed JPEG. And uh, I kind of want to bring back some of that profile. So I'm going to add up the contrast, like plus 38 looks good to me. Um, I actually don't really want to touch the highlights. I feel like the highlights look good. I want the snow to be bright, but I do want to bring up the shadows quite a bit. So I'm going to bring up the shadows right around plus 56. That looks good to me. i uh, getting a little bit of the detail back in the eyes, and I'll be able to get uh, even more when I do the dodging and burning later in Photoshop. Uh, the whites are a little blown out, so I'm going to bring them down just a hair. Somewhere in there, uh, somewhere in there looks pretty good to me. Blacks, I'm just going to touch them to the, the darker side, bring out those blacks a little bit stronger. Now, like I talked about shooting in RAW, I lose a lot of that vibrance that you see on the back of the JPEG image. So I'm just going to bring in some of the vibrance. I don't really ever touch saturation because I feel like it overkills it. But vibrance, I always bring in like plus 30 on the vibrance. Dehaze, sometimes I might add just a smidge of dehaze on, the, dehaze on this. And I don't ever do texture or clarity uh, or sharpening for that matter in Lightroom because I don't like what it does. I sharpen all my images in Photoshop. Then I'll show you guys how I do that in just a minute. Um, what I do want to do is I, I want to brighten up some of this green area in here. Some of this, uh, this mossy stuff you see on the branch right there. I feel like that would look good if... Uh, it's just a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna go to saturation uh, for each individual color and I'm just gonna bump that up just a little bit on the yellows and on the greens. Like I said, just to kind of make those colors pop a little bit more. That looks good to me. Um, sometimes what I like to do is I go into the hue and I can actually change the hue of the greens. Um, not so much in this case. I kind of like, uh, like how it is just straight out of camera. So I'm gonna reset those. Um, I always come down here and I remove chromatic aberrations just in case there are any. Normally the, the really good lenses don't, don't have too many because of the um, <clears throat> nano coatings. Sometimes I'll do the enable profile corrections, but what you can see is it eliminated this vignette that was around the, the whole frame. And I actually kind of think that that makes this image in particular pop. So I'm going to leave the vignette from the profile correction alone and I'm going to crop the image. So I always edit first and then crop later. Let's say I want to throw this on Instagram, so I'm going to do it by the 4x5 crop and uh, I'm just gonna kind of bring it down just a little bit. I don't want to crop heavy, just in case I ever want to print this a little bit bigger, but I definitely will crop it somewhere in there. I'm um, not really following any rule of thirds in particular. I'm gonna kind of throw him smack dab in the middle. What I do like is it's balanced on the left and the right with these uh, little snow piles. So let's go ahead and finish that, and then I'm gonna show you guys what I do in Photoshop. So I'm gonna go here, edit this bad boy in Photoshop, All right, so now we got, uh, we got our original image opened up in Photoshop just as a, as a brand new file. Now, first thing I always do is I like to make a copy of my background. I keep the original background locked just in case. Um, I told you guys I, I apply my sharpening in Photoshop, but let me show you guys how. So I grab the lasso tool and I outline my subject with that lasso tool. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to highlight the portions that I wanna, I wanna sharpen individually. So there, I got my little marching ants around my chickadee, Command J, or uh, Control J on a, on a PC is gonna make a new layer with just what I have selected, so just the chickadee. So now that I'm on layer one, I'm gonna go to filter, I go to high pass. So what high pass does is it takes the micro contrast in between the darks and the lights, and it, um, that's what it focuses on when it's sharpening. So I just high passed, oh, let me go back actually, Command Z to go back, because I didn't show you guys what I wanted to. So come all the way down to other, high pass, now it's gonna give me the option to pick how much high pass I wanna put on there. I normally do like two, anything more than two and it starts to look a little fake. You can drag this up here to one of the sharpened points and see what's going on. So there we go, we find the eye. That looks good to me. It's not overkill, but it's taken that micro adjustment and just sharpened it up just a hair. Come down here to overlay and then boom. Let me step on in, you guys can see what I'm talking about. A little bit too far. Okay, so there's the chickadee. There's without that uh, high pass frequency, and there's with the high pass frequency. High pass frequency. So like I said, it's it's just subtle. It's just a, just a, a hint of sharpening exactly where I wanna add sharpening. And that is how I sharpen my images. So I always pick the point that I want to be highlighted, whether it's the eye or the whole, the whole animal, and I sharpen it that way. Next, I'm going to shift, select all, command E to flatten that entire look. So now it's just one image. It's merging the link. Let's give that a second to do its thing. Next, I'm going to add another layer. And then I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to edit fill. This is how I do my dodging and burning. 50% gray is going to be what it comes up. 100% opacity, boom, hit, okay. So now I have a 50% gray background covering my whole image. I'm going to overlay. 
and what it does is no change. Whether I turn it on or off, there's gonna be no change. That's, that's what I wanna do. So now I wanna do all of my dodging and burning on that layer, on this background copy layer with the 50% gray fill. Uh, we'll start with the whites. So what I'm going to do is just bump up my brush size just a little bit so we're not here all day. I got white selected down here as my color and I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna start dodging right now. So anything that's white that I really wanna ex uh, accentuate with a dodge and burn, I'm just gonna color it in. And that's literally all I'm doing right now. As you can see, it's brightening it up, um, but only subtly. Nothing, uh, nothing that's gonna scream like, hey, I've been dodged and burned. So there we go. I'm pretty comfortable with uh, how that looks with the white. I'm gonna leave the snow how it is, and then I'm gonna switch to black. All of my contrast is really in the black. So right now I'm painting opacity 16%, so it's barely showing through, but it's enough to make the, um, the feathers in areas that I want to pop actually pop. Let's come over here, color in the eye a little bit, color in the feet just a little bit, and I, I've added a little bit of that texture back. Now, when I have snowy images like this where the, the snow looks like bokeh, um, sometimes I cheat and I add a little bit more. So I'm gonna drop my opacity down to like 8% and I'm gonna bump up my size. So what you can see is right here on the bottom left of this image where there is no snow, let's add a little bit of snow. So all I'm doing right now is I'm adding little white dodged layers and it, it's creating the snow look. So I, I, I actually kind of like the way it looks. Um, it allows me to put snow where there is no snow and uh, just gives me that overall Boca look that I know a lot of people are coming for. So right now I'm literally just changing opacity, changing brush size, and, and adding snow. All right, so that looks pretty solid to me. Step back out, do the before and after. That's without, that's with, without, with. So I've just added a little bit more drama, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing over the top, and then I'm just gonna Command E and flatten that layer once again. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I, I really don't do anything else, so I'm just gonna go to File, Save, Hopefully it shows back up in Lightroom in time. I don't want to waste too much of your guys' time. Come on. All right, so there, now we have a copy. What else I like to do is I'm just gonna accentuate the, um, the focus of this image by adding a couple gradient filters. Definitely don't want the temp to be that cold. All I'm doing is slightly darkening the edges. I don't... And then that's it, that's all I would do. I would export this and that would be my final image. So, uh... Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about how I edit. Um, what I'll do now is I'll throw the images up, all of them again, um, from the snow day, and uh, you guys can get a better look at them full screen. Hopefully you guys learned something. Um, that's my workflow. Hope you learned something about Flash. Just fill in some of those details, and uh, I'll see you in the next one, okay? Cheers.